Hello, everyone. Thanks for joining the uh, webinar uh, hosting today. So uh, let's give it uh, one more minute to, for the rest of the visitors to join. So we start shortly, uh, so stay tuned. So my name is Tony. Um, I'm co-hosting this webinar with my colleagues, uh, Stephen. Uh, you'll be seeing him on the chat window. So his handle is Cyberlink Channel. So you'll be able to talk to him using the chat window. I'll be the presenter for tonight. Um, I'll be working through several demos and uh, feature uh, you know, showcasings to show you how you can make some really cool effects uh, for Hollywood style like uh, movie productions. Okay, so let's get started. So I think uh, it's right on time. So let's get started. Uh, first of all, I'd like to show you uh, what we're going to see tonight by showing you the video that has been produced earlier. So let me start up the video first. Okay, so during the, uh, the session, you'll be learning about how to make uh, titles, uh, showing on the videos, and you'll be learning about using different techniques to um, try to create a talking portrait and uh, teach you how to do a uh, green screen effect even without the green screen. There's uh, some techniques uh, combination that we can use using power director plus color director to achieve the result. And then we'll be showing some uh, effects you can apply together with the titles. So I would, if you're making some kind of a sci-fi theme, uh, sci theme uh, video production, you'll be very useful. And uh, in the last part, it will be a more advanced. Um, uh, we'll be talking about how to how to handle the uh, the, the picture in picture uh, objects and how to leverage the keyframe controls. So you'll be able to uh, handle your object very precisely uh, within your video production. So there'll be uh, quite exciting sections coming up. So uh, let's get started. Okay, well, let me close the video first. Okay, so first, uh, so we saw that uh, there was a title that we wanted to recreate. So something like this. So in this demonstration, I'll show you how we can create a very impressive, high quality titles using different kinds of tools. Um, in Power Director, there's already a title room that you can select multiple titles. You can see there's a lot of pre-designed, preset titles that you can work with. But uh, today we're going to use a little bit, uh, a, 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 a little bit different tool to create the result we wanted. So aside from this very easy drag and drop titles, uh, today we are going to actually use a, a little bit more advanced tool. So here uh, we have the new blue title of Pro. So this is actually um, a very advanced plugin that you can create very nice uh, titles. So let me br uh, bring up one of the uh, the title first. Okay, so uh, this is the title, and I think uh, to give it a better contrast, let's give the title a uh, background. So let's go to the color boards to select the red background uh, to use it as our, our backdrop. So this is the red background. Uh, let's put it there. Uh, let's extend the background a little bit So because we wanted to accommodate the length of the title. Okay, and then let's work on the background a little bit before we jump into titles. Okay, for the backgrounds, uh, let's try to give it a little bit more of the, the film type of look and feel by applying the vignette uh, effect. So let me go into uh, the effect room and then let's select uh, focus effect. So you can see this is the focus effect. It kind of creates a vignette look and feel. Let me drop, drag and drop that on top of my uh, color board. And let me do some fine tune adjustments to make it more um, suitable for the, uh, the effect we're trying to recreate. So uh, let me go, sorry, let me go back out. Let me go into the effect. And there's the vignette settings and parameters. So let's try to adjust the vignette a little bit. So just to make it very subtle, but it is still there. So something like this. And uh, once this is done, then you can exit the, uh, the effect control room. 
So now we have our backdrop and we have our titles uh, in the front. So let's go in and see how we can utilize the Titler uh, Pro to create a very impressive title. Okay, so first, uh, I think we wanted to uh, change the, the, uh, the text first. Okay, let me select the text. Let me put down side the link presents. Okay, and let's change the font to something more uh, modern. So let's go with a uh, Seagull UI light. Okay, this is the font I like. And then let's give it some uh, animations for the intro and outro part for the title, uh, the titles. So right here you can see, sorry that uh, the user, user interface is in uh, Mandarin, but if you're using an English system, you'll be able to see everything in English. So this is not a problem. Um, so first, let's go in, into uh, the, the effect libraries. Uh, we wanted to apply some transitions. There's already a lot of uh, different type of uh, transition we can uh, we can apply. It's already pre-built. There's, there's a lot of things to choose from. So first, let's do an intro first. I wanted to select the turn, and then there's the uh, the stealth letters. So by hovering your mouse on different type of presets, you can see the real time effects being shown immediately uh, for the preview purpose. So if you like that, you can uh, double click and then you notice that the, uh, the intro has been uh, added to the timeline. And then you can go back out and try to view it again on the timeline. At the same time, let's try to add an outro sequence as well to the, uh, uh, to the effect. So let's go back and go back out to the library. Let's select this time. Let's select another type of effect. Let's go to the city light folder, and then there's this um, um, the pro flash. I like this one. So it kind of gives you the flash out type of effect. So let's drag it to the uh, the end part. So now you have the beginning of the intro uh, letters coming up one by one, and then the letter will blink out one by one. So once you're satisfied with what you have on the preview window, you can close it, and then uh, you'll go back to your PowerDirector user interface. And then you can do the real-time preview again on the uh, PowerDirector preview window. So that's what we have. So let's uh, drag it a little bit longer. OK, so this is what we want. So uh, uh, we wanted to recreate another one. So let me do a, just a very quick copy paste because uh, essentially it's the same idea right here. So instead of uh, the same set of text, you have two set of text here. So one is Cybring presents and it goes out and then it goes into the major movie making. So there are different type of uh, uh, transition to, to play with. And for the last part, with the ending part, we'll be utilizing one of the titles that uh, was uh, come with the wedding pack, uh, designer pack. So let me go into uh, the titles. And there's a wedding pack. So I'm going to show you just on the screen, you can see for the wedding pack, there's a lot, there's a different type of titles presets you can you can use for to fit the theme. So there's a couple of them just to quickly show you how they look like. So they look very romantic, uh, very flowery. Uh, if it suits your uh, situation, uh, it, it's a good pack for, for this kind of usage. So let me drop this one on my timeline right here. Okay, so this one has the, uh, the leaf uh, going up, uh, you know, the leaf going up uh, effect, which is I wanted, so I will use this one. But then I didn't like the font too much uh, within, the, within the titles, so let us, ch let us change that. So here, uh, let me type in ending part. Let me change the, the font first. Again, I will just use a very simple clean font uh, using say, Seagull UI Lite. Okay. And then let me type produce. So this is produced by our director. And it is uh, PC Mac. Editor's Choice Award, Choice Winner. Okay, 
So let's make a few more fine adjustments. So I wanted to fit the font into a square-ish layout. So we can adjust the font by size individually. So the last line, I would probably say uh, font size number nine would, would go well with the second line. And then the top line, I'll still make it a little bit smaller. So it produce this kind of uh, uh, a tier shape. OK? And then you notice that uh, the spacing between the, these different lines are a little bit large. So we can make the adjustments as well. So just uh, select either you can select the text box right here by clicking the outline, or you can make the whole selection within the box. And then you can do the, uh, uh, the spacing adjustment right here. So I think I want to put them closer together so, so to have a tighter uh, type of look and feel uh, for, for the font I wanted, to, uh, I wanted to show on screen. So I think that looks pretty good. And unless uh, we can right click and make this object align to the center. So make sure it's, 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 it's right in the middle. Um, so by doing that uh, very quickly, we already got this. Uh, the last part, let me show it to you very quickly. Okay, the last part, this is uh, if I wanted to, to show. And then very quickly, we can add a fade out transition to smooth out the, uh, the ending. Okay. And then we let's add that to the color board as well, so everything goes nicely together. Uh, let's do this. Let's, uh, oops, sorry. Let's go back out. I don't need to do that. Just want to change the duration on this one. So change the fade out duration to one second to make it fade out fade out uh, slower than the text. All right. So so very lastly, I still wanted to add. Uh, uh, sound transition, uh, you know, lighting effects in between the text. So this is very important to create that, uh, you know, movie look and feel. So other than the text itself. So let's go back out, uh, go to the um, uh, the particle, uh, the particle room to select the effect we wanted to use. So let's see. So there is an effect looks go, will go pretty nicely with the text. So this is the effect I wanted to go with. This is a Prince effect. Okay, so let's put them in between, adjust the length. Okay, let's do another copy and put them into the same timeline and just put them like this. And then uh, and then probably we need to adjust a little bit on the on the text position to make it go uh, to make it go together with the uh, the lighting effects at the back. So it, it opens the, yeah, okay. So this is what I want to achieve. Okay, so this is what we have. So very quickly, you can create this type of uh, title effect, uh, plus the lighting transitions in the background, and then the text coming up again, and then the lighting transitions, uh, you know, for, before the, another text showing up, and then everything fades out very nicely. So for a very short intro, you know, for your video production, maybe five, 10 seconds intro, you can you can use this kind of technique to create very high quality. Uh, introduction uh, introduction sections. Okay, so next uh, we'll go into a little bit more advanced uh, usage. So I was talking about how how to uh, create recreate the green screen effect without using a green screen. Um, so there are certain techniques for us to do that. So this is one of the very iconic uh, or uh, classic movie intro, the MGM uh, intro. So let's see. Um, so we have some graphics we can we can actually use. So for example, I wanted to put that uh, golden ring uh, into my uh, into 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 my timeline. But then the problem is that uh, the golden ring itself is not transparent. So I wanted to place I wanted to place a, a portrait person within that within the ring. But I need to make this a transparent image. So how do I go about doing that? Okay. So let me show you how to do this. Let me uh, adjust the, the length for the, the image first. Okay. All right. Okay. So let me adjust the size a little bit to fit it into into my uh, my timeline. Okay. I think that looks nice. Okay. So how to get rid of that? You know, the red background uh, within that ring. Uh, the way you do it is that uh, you can use 
uh, in combination with photo director. So highlight the image, click on fix and enhance, and click on photo director. So if you bought the product of the director suite uh, with the entire family, uh, you have the capability to work in between the application. So for example, you're working on image, you can use uh, on, for your video production, you can use a photo director to assist you uh, to change the image, uh, this look and feel, and send it back to a timeline directly without interrupting your workflow. The same works for your audio as well. So for audio director, you can work uh, in the same fashion. Okay, so for right here, let's go into uh, the background removal tool. So just very quickly that uh, we need to select the foreground. So let's make a selection. So these are the black foregrounds that uh, I'm using a brush to, to, to select it. So you can see the brush is doing uh, auto edge detection. Uh, so you can just brush it to the area, then it will automatically pick up the, uh, the edges uh, for you. So you don't need to worry about um, you know, very do, doing very fine tuning selections. So this way you should be able to get this done very quickly. Okay, this is larger area. We can use a larger size brush. Okay, and then here, let's go back out. Okay. So we are almost done with the outer outer ring, outer areas. Okay, the inside, again, it's very easy. Just using the brush, and you can make a very quick selection. So it goes around those uh, those leaves, around the. Uh, around the, the, the frame. So I think that's what we want. And then let's say we wanted to remove that uh, area of selection. So that's actually the foreground we selected, hit apply. And you can see that everything is removed nicely. You will have the transparent image to work with now and just hit uh, the button back. So say yes, you want to save this image and bring it back to the timeline. And then automatically you have this image already you know, nicely done and put it back to the timeline for you. All right, so the next step is that we wanted to uh, put uh, a portrait behind that, uh, behind the frame. So let us add one more, one more track uh, above the, uh, the the first track. So that goes to right there. Okay, so we can see, let's adjust the size a little bit. Okay. Hold on a second. All right, let's adjust the, the size of the video frame to make it fit uh, inside this uh, this this, uh, this this frame. Okay, so probably something like that. But uh, as you can see, there's uh, it's not a transparent background, and uh, there's several ways you can try to remove the background uh, first. Of course, if you're familiar with chroma key, that's one way to do it. But uh, unfortunately, uh, this video was taken with the, uh, the red background, which is not an ideal situation for uh, the chroma key removal. Uh, we, can, we can give it a try and let you see the result. And we'll, we'll show you another alternative way to, uh, to do a better job uh, to, to show better quality of the result. So uh, let's go into the modified uh, designer, okay, the PIP designer. Here you can select the chroma key um, option, and then you can use the uh, the color drop, the color dropper to select the color. And of course, uh, all the red colors will be removed. But then again, you can see that uh, because red is very close to your skin color and even your lip color, so your your um, your skin complexion will look a little bit un unnatural. Uh, by, you know, by doing this um, uh, chroma key removal of the red color. So, so I go, I'm going to show you another way to do it, try to avo avoid this problem. So here they see the lips is, is gone. It's not red anymore. So let's cancel that. Let's go out. We don't want to save it. Okay. Another way to do it is that we can utilize the color director tool. So let's go into the color director. So again, 
Uh, this is the uh, the product that help you adjust the color and do very advanced motion tracking um, in the in the application. So here, what we wanted to do is I wanted to separate um, the person in the video from the background. So how we can do that? There is a way that we can utilize the motion tracker tool to do it. So here, I'm using the motion tracking brush right here. So let's make a quick selection on the background. So again, you can see this is just the first frame of the video. Uh, I'm making the selection based on the first frame. And then the tool will automatically try to help me uh, track uh, this selection in the subsequent frames. Okay. All right, so this is a very quick selection. And uh, let's, uh, let's let the tool to select it. Uh, to do the tracking. So this is the tracking button. So once you hit the tracking button, uh, you can see that uh, now the video play, plays frame by frame and the motion tracking algorithm is doing the tracking all by itself. So for 30 frames per second, the algorithm is doing the tracking 30 frames, 30 times uh, for, for each, uh, each one second frame. So once the tracking is done, all this masking information will, will be kept uh within the program and then you can play with the uh the mask uh, to to adjust the color of the video so now that's been done so now we have successfully separated the background with the with the person in the video okay let's uh, go back to the first frame okay and then uh let's do let's replace the red color with the actual green screen uh, effect. So there's a color replacement. Uh, I can select the red color. Okay, just uh, give it a few seconds. So I'm selecting the red color. You can see that uh, the color has been selected red. I'm going to replace it with green. I select the green from this palette and then done. You get your uh, background from red to green. And then you can send it back to your uh, you do your power direct timeline. So go back. So in this way, you will avoid uh, the problem of uh, uh, you know affecting uh, the person's lips. So here you have the green in the background. Then you can do the same thing by using the chroma key uh, removal tool, remove the green color. So now you get a proper uh, background removal. And then let's try to get rid of all the green uh, lightings on her face and we can it's safe. Okay, so that's about done. And then uh, since her shoulder is coming out of the ring, so let's do a very quick masking uh, uh, of that to remove these areas coming out. So let's go to the mask tab. So there's already a preset uh, mask, a circle mask. We can adjust the mask size a little bit. So I think this is almost there. Okay, I think that looks pretty good. And then let's hit save. And then, let's, let's try to play it. Okay, so, so that's how you do um, a green screen effect. And uh, you can fit any video into in any shape. Uh, doesn't matter if this is in this case it's a circle you want to put it into an irregular shape you just use the irregular mask to do it or you can put it into a rectangular shape different kind of uh, different kind of usages um, and then with the assistance of color director you can create a very precise uh, green screens so in this is why it helps uh, to keep the the, the, the flash color the, the red the warm color on her face um, even though you initially were using the wrong color for the backdrop. Okay, so let's go into the next section very quickly. Mm. Okay, so in the movies we have seen, um, I believe most of you have watched like Harry Potter before. So there is a very interesting scene in Harry Potter that's uh, is the talking portraits on either is on the newspaper or is on um, you know you know the, the the pictures hanging on the wall. So uh, we thought that's pretty interesting if we can recreate recreate this kind of effects uh, using using Power Director. So again, uh, we have some 
images that uh, we grabbed from uh, from our library. Uh, you, you can use the same technique using Photo Director to remove all these white colors. It's just using the background remover tool inside Photo Director, remove it, and you'll get a transparent image like this. So everything looks transparent, and you can drop it into a timeline, and then you can try to fit videos onto the timeline, um, and then uh, you know try to fit them into the frame so that they look authentic. They they look like uh, you know they are the actual pictures in the frame. But uh, usually the videos are in sixteen by nine or uh, different kind of uh, you know usually that's in in the aspect ratio. And the frame has different kind of sizes, but so how do you fix the problem? So it's very easy. So I'm going to show you this. So in this uh, case, this person at the top, uh, you can see his video is going out of the frame. Uh, so let's make a selection of this video right here. Okay, and then going into the the modify room. Okay, and then again, um, we'll use the masking tool to try to fix the problem. Okay, so it comes up now. Okay, so there's a mask tab. So select the mask tab, and then uh, instead of selecting predefined shapes, uh, let's select a freeform shape. So right here, you can select this. This is the freeform. <laughs> then you can make adjustment very freely. So you're not confined to um, a very rigid, uh, like a square or a, a, a precise rectangle. So you can do this, make adjustment, try to fit it roughly into the frame. And then let's go back out. Maybe you would put the, pull the, um, the video a little bit higher to fit it nicely and safe. Okay, when it goes back to the timeline, and you can see the, the video has been cropped. Actually, it's been masked nicely into the frame. So I think a lot of people were asking, how do you crop a video? How do you crop a video? So, so you actually don't have to crop the video. You can actually mask the video, and then you can work around the problem very easily. So you can hide areas you don't want to see in your video frame using masking. Okay, let's do one more. There's still a void right here. So let's put uh, let's put this our our model right here back to the frame. Okay, let's try one more time. Let it drop right here. Okay. Okay. Now we have to do uh, resizing again. Resizing is very easy. Just on the preview window, you can already resize. Okay. Then let's move the videos to uh, to the the frame position. And again, the video, uh, because it's a 16 by nine aspect ratio, so it's coming out of the frame. Let's do the same thing again. Go to the, go to modify, and then go to mask, and then we'll mask out, uh, or you can say crop the unwanted areas uh, to show on the, on the, on the preview screen. Where well, there's a mask, and then let's do that again very quickly. So here, we can do this masking I think that already fits quite nicely. So let's hit save. Okay, on the preview window, uh, once that's been masked, then you can see how it fit nicely into the frame. And now we wanted to make this video uh, have the same look and feel, uh, you know, to the rest of the, the the videos on the wall. So what we can do is we can apply uh, FX the the video effects. Uh, so the effects I'm using is. Uh, the flickering effect. So that's actually called the old uh, the old TV effect. So right here, old, the old movie effect. Sorry. So just drag and drop the old movie effect on top of the videos that we just put it in. Yeah, on the type uh, on the preview window, you should be able to see already. Uh, it's becoming uh, almost like the rest. And then uh, we're dropping another effect. Uh, to create the um, the canvas type texture uh, for the videos, so that's actually called the the crayon effect. So let's try to find out. Right here, the color crayon crayon effect. 
So this will recreate that uh, canvas type look and feel to the videos. So let's drop it in as well. So for people who are familiar with PowerDirect, probably you already know you can stack multiple effects. But if you're new, that uh, this is a, a good tip for you. So if you like, uh, you know, the effects, you can, you know, by experimenting it, doing the stacking, you can come up with something you know, really new. It's not uh, in the presets, so you can stack multiple effects, five, ten, or even more. Uh, try to come up with this unique combination that you are trying trying to uh, create. All right. So just very quickly. So this is another fun session that we can uh, we can create, uh, uh, recreate that uh, iconic scene in Harry Potter. Okay. So I actually got two more. So let's see. Uh, not sure how many of you are the fans of Star Wars. So uh, definitely, I'm one of them. So I will show you how we can recreate this. Uh, some of the very classical, very uh, iconic uh, scene, uh, especially the intro for uh, uh, from from Star Wars. So here, this is the the videos. Uh, you know, this is the, the final result we wanted to do. So this is the Star Wars type of uh, intro, and then, of course. It comes always comes with the uh, uh, the scrolling the scrolling text uh, before the movie starts. So let's try to recreate that. So let's move move this away first. Let's try to recreate that uh, Star Wars title. Okay. So let me go into uh, title room. So let me pick just a very simple title to start with. So I'll, I'll start right here. As you can see, this title doesn't look anything like the uh, the Star Wars. So let's double click on this title. Let's go into the title designer, try to fix the problem. So first, we need a proper font. So you can select the the, the object by clicking on the outline. And then uh, let's try to select that Star Wars font. So I think it should be somewhere here, uh, right here, Star Wars, OK. Then let's put down star, and then let's create another one. Drop it below and Star Wars. Okay, and I think we want this larger. So let's adjust the font size. Let's put let's make it make it really large like this. Okay, and uh, let's try to stack these two uh, <clears throat> two words on top of on top, one of one on top of each other on, on top of another. Okay, and we can do this and align it to the center at the bottom one. And now we can just slightly adjust it to the right position. So I think that looks pretty nice. And of course, the Star Wars title doesn't look purplish. So let's try to fix the problem again um, by applying a, a nice, sorry, applying a nice border. The border should be in bright yellow. Okay, so we need to do another one as well. Okay, and then let's try to um, try to make the uh, the inside of the the characters uh, black. So now it's looking a little bit more like the actual Star Wars uh, title. All right. So once that's done, now uh, we can you know save the result and go back out, and then we can start adding some effects on top of each other. It's something like some it kind of like layering, you know. You're putting one stroke of your brush to add uh, the the uh, the effect to make it more uh, authentic. So first, uh, let us add a uh, uh, intro animation. So the stack, the text, you know, just placing there static is pretty boring. So let's try to use some transition effect to help us with that. So let's see, we what kind of transition we could choose. There is a nice transition called cross. Oh, actually, this is being used uh, more traditionally between crossing from clip A into clip B, uh, as you can see right here in the preview window. But uh, I'm using this as my advantage. Uh, you know, try to recreate that uh, zoom in type of effect with the text. And I really want this uh, have the movie 
feel, look and feel. So I'm going to lengthen the uh, um, the text du the, the text object duration. I'm going also going to lengthen the duration of the effects. Let's do it like ten seconds. And then we let's see how the result looks like. So very slowly, you see, okay, the Star Wars text slowly comes in and, okay, stop at the right position, and then let's add a fade out, the end. At the end, it will fade out very nicely, just like that. So that's looking pretty good already. So. But I still want to add a little bit more flavor to my to my text. So what I can do is I can actually use the uh, um, also again a special effect. So this is the the effect the special effect in the past. Um, those these video effects can only be applied to uh, video objects. For example, you have a video clip recorded from your cell phones or from your camcorder. You can apply all these kind of video effects. But in the latest PowerDirect version 13, uh, we actually expand the capability to allow uh, the effects can now be applied on top of text objects. So here we have the text object right here. So this is a text object. So if you're using PowerDirect 12, you will not be able to uh, you know, apply the, uh, the, the video effects on top of your text. This is only available in 13. So if you wanted to do this, you may need to upgrade to the 13 version. All right, so let's find the lens flare effect. So this is a lens flare effect I wanted to use. So let's drop it right here. And maybe you want a lens flare to come in when our our title is in position. So maybe somewhere around here. I think that looks nice. Okay. And then let's play it here. So let's take a quick look. So our title comes, you know, enters the scene. And then the lens flare is there. But the problem is the lens flare is static. It's not doing anything, it just shows right there. It's kind of boring, right? So again, let's try to uh, spice up that a little bit. So we will have, we'll use the uh, uh, the keyframes, try to help us with that. Okay. Oh, I think let us adjust the position first. So let's go to modified and let's adjust the positioning of the lens flare. So I think it needs to be moved a little bit to the right. Then uh, you should sit nicely to the first character on, on the Star Wars. And then um, and then let's go use the keyframe, try to animate this lens flare effect. So let's try to do that with, um, let's see, position. So let's start. Let's move the frame to the very, very first frame. So this is a little bit more advanced for uh, the beginner users, but these are actually very powerful tools. So for example, you saw the lens blade is just sitting there. It's not doing not not, not doing much. Uh, with the keyframe, you can make things animated uh, the way you want it. So for example, we can adjust the position. Let's, let's put a keyframe here. So the lens blade will start from here. And maybe in between, let's put one more keyframe. So we wanted to make the position of the lens flare move. So let's move it from here to here. And then we put another one at the end. And then adjust the position. So let's put this one, put a very nice shine into, into the frame. So probably something like that. Okay. And then let's try to play this uh, sequence again. So we have three uh, keyframes in the sequence. Now you see, now the lens flare started animated, okay? And then we can adjust, more, make more adjustments. So for example, you want to do, I want the lens flare to go brighter or dimmer. I can fully, I, have, I will have full control over that. So there is the brightness control. So we can start at the beginning with the brightness of uh, at the level 100. Uh, maybe as the light go moves, maybe moves right here. We can we can make it really over bright, something like that. And then when it uh, it's almost going out, let's dim it a little bit. And then when the lens break goes out, let's uh, dim it completely. 
Okay, so by doing this different kind of combinations, uh, you can create very interesting results. So let's take a look at that again. So now the lens flare moves and then goes very bright and, and dims out. I think that goes nicely with our uh, the, the title if I wanted to recreate. Okay, so let's see that again. Okay, now the title comes in. The lens flare shows up, the lens flare animator gets brighter and dims out and fades with the title. So th I think that goes pretty nicely. Okay, so the next step is for us to recreate the, the scrolling, uh, scrolling text. So let's remove this. I wanted to recreate this from scratch. So I actually prepared that uh, the, the text that everybody knows a long, long time ago in the galaxy far, far away. So let's try to do that. By doing so, I'll go into the title. So actually, there's a, already a preset title you can utilize to recreate this, this effect. It's called the perspective, uh, perspective scroll. Here you can see the perspective scroll. Use the perspective scroll, drop it in to your timeline. Let's drop it in right here. Okay. And uh, I want this to go pretty long. Let's do 40 seconds. Okay. And then let's double click on that. And we can copy paste the text we just copied, we, we just have. So right here, this is uh, the default text we want. None of that. So we'll make a uh, select all and uh, replace it with the, uh, yep, with the text we wanted. Okay. And then we need to change the color as well. So let's change the color to, again, uh, yellow. So now it is looking a little bit more like Star Wars. And let's make adjustment to the width. So actually we wanted to fit into the frame, the video frame nicely. So let's put the, uh, make it a little bit narrower to fit it nicely into the frame. All right, and then I don't think we need the shadow, so let's uncheck the shadow. Uh, the rest looks good, uh, except one more thing. I think the first, uh, we can make a slight adjustment to to make it narrow a little bit. Let's do minus one. Okay, so now it fits even tighter, okay? And you can do save. Okay, let's try to see that. So now you have this text, you know, just like the opening of the Star Wars movies. There's text scrolling into um, the deep void of the uh, the space. Okay, so if you wanted to uh, adjust the speed, you can adjust the length of the text on the timeline. So the longer it is, uh, the scrolling goes uh, much slower, so we can try that very quickly to see the results. And of course, if you wanted to uh, adjust the position where that text ends, uh, where it ends into the space, we can adjust that as well. So for example, let's go back into the, the title designer and we can you know, uh, move the text down a little bit so uh, the text will actually end uh, nearer to the middle of the frame. So let's try to play that again and see what happens. All right, so now the text is scrolling even slower. So, so that's how you recreate this uh, very iconic scene from uh, from Star Wars. Of course, you can plug in any text you want. It doesn't necessarily to be coming from the, the movie itself. It'll be fun to use this uh, into one of your video productions just for fun. All right. So lastly, we have one more to show you. Um, so this is a little bit more complex 
that uh, you can uh, utilize both a keyframe and also um, objects. So you, uh, the, 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 the purpose of this uh, 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 in, in this section is uh, how to animate the objects on, on your timeline. I'll let uh, the program to load the to load the project file. Just give it a few seconds. Let's try it again. All right. So what we have is here we have a backdrop. So if we if I you know hide all these different elements, you can see we have a clean backdrop. It's just a wallpaper of the uh, the space. So it's very easy. You can get this kind of image from from the from from the internet or from your personal library. So once you put the backdrop, uh, you can try to search for some kind of uh, image. You know that resembles a spaceship or some kind of aircraft. Um, if it's, um, it doesn't have a clean background, so something like this, again, you can use photo director to try to help you to remove the background very quickly. So end up, you end up with an image like this. You know, it's a transparent image uh, with a very clean uh, edges being uh, smoothed out for you. And then you can drag and drop this onto your timeline, so like that. So actually, what we want to do is uh, we wanted to recreate you know, the animated look and feel, uh, you know, the object, how it animates before the backdrop. So how are we going to do this? Uh, let me try to do this side by side so we can take a, a clearer look. So let, let me lengthen the backdrop a bit. And then let's put the, uh, the image here. So initially, if you try to drag and drop the image onto your timeline, it's uh, right in the middle. So let's try to uh, resize that a little bit. And let's move it into the uh, the bottom corner right here, okay? And then uh, we'll use keyframe to uh, uh, to animate this object. So let me lengthen the object a little bit like this, okay? And then uh, go in here. So right here at the bottom, you can already see there's a keyframe. So you will see that position. So this is one we want to adjust. So let's create one key. Sorry, let's create one keyframe at the beginning of the frame. So this is where the spaceship will start. So that's one. And now let's create another keyframe at the end. So right here, and this is where the spaceship will end. And uh, I think since it's, we wanted to make it look like it's moving into the space and let's you know adjust the size as well so go back to the keyframe uh, you need to take care of the scale as well so for the scale that at the end is the smaller smaller size when it starts uh, it's a larger uh, sp uh, spacecraft right here okay so once we're done with the keyframe for both scaling and the position we can we can take a look at how the enemies so it goes in there and uh, become smaller and smaller. Okay, so maybe we can play with the size a little bit more, make it even smaller, like this. Okay. All right. So this uh, this done very quickly. You already have the spacecraft animated uh, before the backdrop. And of course, you can adjust the speed how the spacecraft goes into um, into the space. Uh, you, again, it's the same idea using keyframe. So there's a certain key, uh, certain keyframe you have to set um, to adjust the speed while the spacecraft moves into into the space. Okay. So on top of that, let's add some effects. So let's again add some lens effect. So let's go into the the, the PIP object room. There are also some lens effects we can utilize. Let's search lens. Uh, I think we can do 
probably this land square. Okay. Again. The lens flare let me try it again put it into onto my timeline i forgot to unhide the timeline right here <clears throat> Okay, so now you see the lens flare. Let's adjust the size a little bit. Adjusting the wrong height. Okay. Back out. Yeah, let me make the right color selection. Okay, right here. So we wanted the lens flare to go with the back of the spacecraft. So right here. So it's like the uh, like the engine of the spacecraft. Okay. Okay. And then we wanted to animate this as well. Otherwise, when the spacecraft goes into the space, the lens flare is just sitting there, but not moving with the space, let's say, uh, the spacecraft. So what we wanted to do is, let's do this right here. Again, let's use the keyframe to, to help us with that. So let me go back to the first frame where the spacecraft started. So right here. So we'll put this right here. So this again, scale and position. Okay, at the end, we we'll also do the same. We'll put two more keyframes right there, but this time we'll move this into the space and make it much smaller. Okay, like that. I think that's that's proper. And let's try to see the effect. This needs to be here, okay. Let's move this right here. Yes. Okay. So making sure that uh, you have the both keyframe. See that. Let's try to do this again. I'm selecting the wrong parameters. Okay, so let's repeat this one more time. Sorry about that. So we have the first keyframe. Let's select position and scale, not rotation. Okay, and then at the end, at the end right here, we'll do rescaling and uh, repositioning. Okay, so let's see. Okay, so we got it this time, finally. All right, so there's only one side of the engine, so let's save that. So if you wanna do another side, it's very easy. Just uh, copy and paste onto another timeline, and then you'll be able to recreate this. Um, just shift the position a little bit. So open up the window again, and then all you need to do is, again, using the keyframe, shift the position uh, from uh, left to right, and then go to the, the the second keyframe, and again shift the position. So very easily, you got uh, you got a spacecraft with two engines. Okay, so this is how you recreate that. Okay, so of course there's a more advanced keyframe you can do by like for example adjusting the intensity opacity of the uh, the lens flare objects, or even uh, we can use um, motion blur, uh, try to you know recreate that speed, look and feel um, when the spacecraft moving through moving through the uh, uh, the space. There's an option, the motion blur selection right here. So it's under motion tab, and you can maximize the the parameters. Try to recreate the the look and feel. All right, so keyframing is a little bit more, a little bit more advanced. 
uh, requires some patience and time for you to explore. Uh, but when you get it done right, you can recreate, um, you know, very precise motions or very very precise, uh, very precise effects that you wanted to achieve. So uh, we'll probably end the session right here. So there's only five minutes left. So let's go back out um, to your YouTube window. So very quickly, let's take a quick look. So on your window, uh, under the uh, the videos windows, you can see that uh, we have a description right here. So anyone who who is watching these videos, um, please do take a, a few minutes to help us uh, fill up the survey. Anyone who have completed the survey are entitled uh, to get a ten percent off coupon from us. So you can use the ten percent coupon to purchase the product from cycling.com. Uh, already now is already have a pretty good deal running on uh, on Power Director Ultra, so we can take a quick look at that. So Ultra is now at fifty nine. You can apply a further ten percent off on the, on top of that, uh, and even Ultimate is uh, is now uh, selling uh, together with uh, Photo Director. Uh, so it's 